Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Sean in Science. I'm Sean and I'm in science. So today I wanted to share with you guys my university experience and I was thinking of doing it as a series that goes through um, each year, so from year one to year four. So before we get started, I want to give a bit of context to my pre-university life. Um, I did biochemistry at King's College and before that for my A-levels I did maths, English, biology and chemistry and I loved all of them, especially biology and chemistry, which is why I decided to go with biochemistry at King's College London. So my university options were uh, medicine to three unis, one was Kiel and the other was Queen Mary, I can't remember my third one. And my fourth option was actually mechanical engineering with biochemistry being my last option, you know. So I actually got through to interviews at Kiel and I unfortunately didn't get shortlisted or go past that. So then my plan was I'll go for biochemistry at King's College London with the hopes of doing medicine as a postgraduate course. With that in mind, I started my university career at King's College London. Now, when I started, I initially was going to just do a three-year BSc course, but when I got to my second and slash third year, I decided to extend my degree by one more year to do an integrated master's degree, hence four years. Okay, so now I'm just going to delve into um, what first year was like for me and I'm going to kind of put it into different sections. First of all, talking about the academics aspect of it and how the course was structured and how it was like during exam season. And then I'm going to move on to um, accommodation slash social life and then just leave with a bit of um, advice that I would give to you guys if you're thinking of number one, either coming to King's or going to any universities within London. My degree was biochemistry and in the first year we had a thing called common year one and that was literally just getting everyone who had decided to do a life science degree so either it was biochemistry or anatomy or pharmacology we were all bunked into one as common year one and we had joint lectures throughout the course of the year so we had modules such as cell biology neuroscience um, pharmacology and really it was to give a bit of a taster to everyone and give that as an option for you to potentially change courses if you wanted to um, before you moved into second year. Looking back on this, this was actually a very good um, structure that the university had because I know a friend who had originally applied to do a biochemistry to do a biochemistry degree and I think she by the end of first year was just not feeling it so she changed degrees to something like anatomy because she had had a bit of a taster throughout the modules um, from the modules that we've done in the first year. So it really was a good way for us as students to critically reflect on the degree that we had chosen to do and whether or not it was the best fit for us. So coming year one, as I said, was about six to seven modules and it was across the year mostly lecture based. So we had around 400 students all bunged into one lecture. It was a huge lecture room and um, and because it was such on a big scale, during the week we would then have like little mini seminars that allowed us to be able to consolidate the stuff that we had learnt in the lectures. Um, in addition to that, we had coursework throughout the course of the year and we had a system called KEATS, I have forgotten what that stands for, um, and it was just a way for um, the module organisers to send us work and then for we to do it and upload it onto that system. Looking back on it, first year was actually quite easy. I was really, really on it. I went to every lecture. I would then go to the library and I'll be there for quite a few hours just making like posters and making notes on what it is that we've learned and trying to come up with questions or multiple choice answered um, answers in preparation for the exams like I was I was really on it to be fair now the exam structure for first year um, was really basic it was more or less multiple choice questions and some short answer questions as well. We had quite a few banks of questions, so I had um, some textbooks that I would work from or try and find some questions online. Now one thing that I realised that was different between A-level and first year of uni 
was that you didn't have questions or practice questions readily available so whereas during a levels um i think i used um, i had aqa and edexcel as um exam boards during my a levels you could just go online and find exam um, exam questions and work through that and, and practice with that but with um university because it's a module organizer that are coming up with the questions they need to have the bank of those questions in-house so it wasn't always ready, readily available until like maybe a few weeks to exams that they could like release one or two paper pass paper questions that you could work with but i mean if you're getting one pass paper question you're unlikely to get that exact same one during the exam um for the actual exam okay so when it came to exam preparation it wasn't too difficult i think the rate limiting step was again trying to get your hands on exam questions. My version or my way of doing that was sitting in the library and trying to come up with some questions myself, working through exam um, exam questions and watching a lot of um, videos. So I am a visual learner. Um, it's one thing for me to listen to something but it doesn't stick in my head so I need to actually see things being drawn and written for things to actually absorb. So I used to watch a lot of videos um, on YouTube. I will leave some links down below to um, certain channels that I found really, really helpful. All right, one advice that I would give for first year and exams and stuff like that would be first of all, to go to all the lectures. You try to make it to as many lectures as you can. Um, I think, that is actually quite key because if you're receiving that information first hand and you're making some notes throughout the lecture um, during the lectures it allows you to be able to consolidate on what it is that you've learned so when you then go into semin um, into the seminars or the mini group sessions and um, during the week stuff is still fresh in your mind with kings we did have the lectures recorded and uploaded and i know a lot of students who kind of just use that as a lazy way out so they will just be like okay i will just watch the um, lessons online and don't need to go into lectures now all power to you that can be something that you do but the, the way i have i am i prefer to go to lectures and then use those videos uploaded online to complement what it is and um, the way i revised another tip that i would give when it comes to the exam season is to identify the kind of personality that you are um, I am someone who prefers to work alone and revise alone. I can do well when I'm working with people and having like study groups, but I need to have first and initially already understood the content that um, we're needing to learn before I can then go into a study group setting and like share my ideas or share the things that I've learned with people. So I think it would be best for you to um, identify the kind of person you are. Are you someone who works alone or are you someone who um, needs to work with groups? I found both systems to work but I definitely preferred working alone and trying to understand what the curriculum and what the module was about before I could just share it around with people. All right, so I'm just going to now move into um, non-academic aspects of first year and that is mainly touching on accommodation and social life. So because I did a life science degree at King's College, my main campus was Guy's Campus just off, um, just outside London Bridge. Um, and in regards to accommodation, I my family lives in London, so I decided to stay in London and live at home rather than um, live on campus. Now, an another advice I would give is for you to identify whether or not you want to do that. I know a friend who also whose family also lives in London, but he decided to move out and live on campus. So it's pros and cons, and you need to decide which battle you're going to fight. <laughs> um, so. I lived at home with my family in London, but I would commute into university, which was about an hour or so. Now, in first year, I had 9 a.m. lectures, meaning that I was commuting during rush hour, and this was not always the best commute, the best experience. Towards the next station, I'd like to apologise for the delay and any inconveniences may cause. And um, 
I would normally do a 9 to 5 in uni, so like come in for 9, 9 a.m. lectures, have several other lectures throughout the day. Um, we've also go into the library and I'll aim to live around 5, which again is rush hour time. So that is one con to that, is that, you know, although I'm saving money living at home, I am spending a lot of money on travel and the whole commute can be quite tiring. Um, a pro to that is that you're saving a lot of money living at home because accommodation in central london is expensive and i know that um this friend who lived out spent a lot of time i uh, spent a lot of money on accommodation now an advantage to living um just off campus is that he ha lived five minutes away from our lecture theater so whereas i'll be leaving my house at like 7 30 in the morning to make a 9 a.m lecture he's running out of bed at 8 50 you know so he just decided what what, what, what what's gonna work for you you know yeah anyway <laughs> another aspect of this is how it affects your social life so first year because of the way it's set up with common year one you have a lot of people you're interacting with that are not actually doing the degree that you want to do so i was a biochemistry um degree person but a lot of the friends that i made were going to be doing anatomy or pharmacology so for me it was just kind of like okay i'm going to know you but i'm going to know you for this year these are not like long lasting friendships that i made in the first year now when i look back with my friend who lives on campus because you are living with people you have more interaction with them and then there's more opportunities to obviously develop a deeper friendship with them when I look back on first year um, in regards to my social life it wasn't like up there because frankly that was not my priority um, for me it would be like 5 8 5 p.m. deuces guys I gotta go home um, so it's just about uh, again a balance in that regards okay so to end to close off first year um, one big major tip that I'll leave with you guys is to um, think about the next step think about the future I know it's first year I know it's like oh it's just the beginning you're just getting you know used to university and used to making friends and used to living your big adult life but guys second year and third year it's such a big jump and I will come on to that in um, the next section within the life sciences um, a lot of websites um, when I looked online did suggest trying to get some experience but because we were again we've been life, life sciences and the main one you'd want to get was lab experience but first years weren't you know the first picks because during the course of the year you, you didn't really have many um hours in the lab you weren't very experienced just yet so in my um first summer with, between my first and second year i actually just used that time to turn one of my hobbies into a way to make money and i just actually spent that um, some are teaching people music um, just try to find ways that you can turn a hobby into something you make money or try to if you can actually try to gain some experience in the field that you're in or outside of the field that you're in even just some life experience is cool so thank you guys for watching I hope you've enjoyed this let me know down below what your experiences are like or what you are hoping your university experiences will be like um, and I'll see you in the next one